Hi everyone, I'm going to show you how to easily make this 3D isometric maze cube in Illustrator CC. We'll begin by clicking on the line segment tool and just switching this to the rectangular grid tool. Now make sure your fill right here is black and click once and make a grid that's 500 by 500 with 20 and 20 dividers. Then make sure that this box right here is checked fill grid and press OK. You'll get this nice grid that's 20 by 20, like that. Then go to your Pathfinder tools over here and select this one right here. This is called Divide. Press that once with this item selected and then right click on this and go Ungroup. And what we have now is 20 by 20 individually, individual boxes. Okay, now we're gonna make our maze. It's uh, pretty simple. Start by deleting the points in the corners. Don't delete any of the edges. So just always keep those edges like that and uh, start deleting shapes. Make sure that you have a wall thickness like this. And yeah, just have fun. You can watch me do it. Okay, so once that's done and you've made your maze, just something like this, don't stress too much about it. Select your entire maze and hold Alt and Shift and just move it to the side because I want you to save a copy of this, okay? So you have this shape and this shape. Now I'm just gonna move this one over here, far away. Select this entire shape and up here, you have this kind of clove leaf thing. This is your symbols panel, click on it and click on this new symbol with this shape selected. This is going to pop up. It's going to be export type. Just keep it as movie clip, new symbol, dynamic, uh, static symbol right here. And just press OK. Good. So now this has become a symbol. This is going to be important in a moment. So what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to select this fill. I'm going to switch it to an orange like that. And I'm going to press M for the rectangle tool. Click once and make a rectangle that's 500 by 500. So the same size as this and press OK. Good. Now we're going to go to Effect, 3D, Extrude and Bevel. It's going to rotate like this. Extrude Depth is going to be the same width as you chose, so 500 in this case. And then click on this button up here and go to Isometric Left, like that. And right here it says 35, switch this to 35.26. This is important to make sure that this is an isometric form. 35.26, that's quite important. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Map Art, click on that button, and in here, we'll see that we have our new symbol down here in the symbol panel. So click on this, and it'll appear on this face. So then all you have to do is go through all the surfaces, so next surface, and click on that next, click on that, and next, click on that, and just continue until you have ours on every single one. So, that looks really good. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on Invisible Geometry. And this is going to make this entire thing see-through and quite messy. But don't worry, we can do with that in just a moment. So, let's press OK. And let's press OK. Cool! Now we have our shape. Now we have to select our shape. We have to go to Object and Expand Appearance. Good. Now our shape is uh, kind of expanded, but it's still quite complicated. So we're going to have to ungroup it and release some clipping masks. If we click on our shape, right-click, go Ungroup, click again ungroup. You might have to do this quite a few times. Okay. So now we see that we're selected in one shape. If I select this one, it's this wall right here. We can deal with that first. When you select one wall like this, right click and go ungroup and then right click and go release clipping mask. Okay. Then we can see everything. Once you've done that, click out of it and click back again. And now we can change the color. So let's make this into like a dark, darker orange almost like a brownish like that, press OK. Good, and now we've had that shape colored. We're gonna do this for every single side. So click from this side, right click, ungroup, click, release, clipping mask, and then we're gonna click out and click on it again. The reason why we click out and click on it again is because we can't just change the color after we release the clipping mask for some reason. So I'm gonna switch this to a kind of more brighter orange. We're gonna do the same at the top, click, right click, ungroup, Release Clipping Mask, select it, and give it an even brighter orange, almost like a peach, like that. 
And then we're going to do the same on the inside colors. So ungroup, release clipping mask, select that bottom right there. I'm going to give this now a bluish color, um, kind of a light, maybe a darker bluish color like that. We can play with them in just a moment. Here, ungroup, release clipping mask, click on this, give it that blue, something like that. And our final side, right click, ungroup, right click, release clipping mask, select this, and give it that another blue color. Go dark blue, something like that. Okay, so now we have our shape. Now, to make it a bit more interesting, you might see that there's some shapes that kind of mimic each other around the corners, but actually, the way we designed our maze, it looks pretty decent. Um, if you find that one side looks very similar to the other side, you can just select your shape right here and go to the Object Transform and Rotate Tool. And you can just scroll through this rotation and you have to scroll, I think, by 180 degrees on either shape. And basically, it will rotate it to a point. If we go to 360, now we've changed the orientation. If I go 180, I think it'll also change it. Maybe I have to go to 90. Anyway, you can play with that rotation, um, basically, to flip this side to that, that side, just to get a different effect. Pretty easy. OK. So I'm going to cancel that, because this actually looks pretty decent. One last little thing to do. Um, what we can do is we can add a shadow. That's quite simple. Um, we're going to take this shape right here, hold Alt, and snap it right to that point right there. Uh, this is roughly a shadow of that one right there. And now I'm going to kind of cheat. I'm going to press M. I'm going to draw a box that goes over top of the shadow, over top of the shape, because I want to keep the, uh, the dimensions, essentially. I want to keep the right angles. So I'm going to do this and then snap to there. I'm going to select this right here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go arrange, send to the back. And then I'm just going to delete the shape that sits on top of it. Oops, I'm going to select that and press delete. Okay. The reason why I did that is because if you have a colored background, the way the shadow looks nicer is if you decrease the opacity, actually, rather than um, just keeping a solid color. So we decrease the opacity, we give it a dark color, kind of like a gray like that. And we can press A, select these points and just drag them into here to kind of have that shadow like shape. And then to sell it a bit more, we can press A and make sure that this line lines up, press A, make sure that that line lines up like that so that it bleeds off the entire canvas. Last thing we can press M, go over top the entire image, select this layer, right click, arrange, send to the back. Uh, that's the same color as our background, so we don't want that, but maybe we give it a kind of an ivory color like that, or even maybe a bit brighter, something like that. And there we go. If we want to finalize this image, we can make a clipping mask, press M, select this anchor point, drag it over top of literally everything, select everything in there like that, right click and go make clipping mask and boom there's your final effect so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you have any questions write them in the comments below if you have any suggestions for future tutorials please let me know hit the like button subscribe share this tutorial and of course as always have a great day and check out our other videos ciao